What is up guys and welcome back to SP Vids. In today's video, yet again, we are on the SP404 Mark II and I'm gonna be sharing some tips with you for making smoother sounding beats. I appreciate I've spent a lot of time on this device over the past couple of months and I promise things will change in the new year. But in the run up to the end of this year, I thought I might as well just carry on smashing tips and tricks for this device. And then in the new year, I've got loads of plans to mix up the content. So make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed already and you will get notifications about my new videos. I've got three tips here for you today related to the SP404 Mark II, which hopefully are Going to mean that you can make smoother sounding beats. I think this is kind of beginner to intermediate, but you never know, even if you're an advanced beat maker, there may be something here that you've missed and it may help you on your way to making better beats. So as usual, let's get down to the desk, let's get on the Mark II and I'll show you these three things. Okay guys, here we are back behind the SP, making videos for you guys, my favourite place to be and my favourite activity to be doing. So these examples that I'm going to show you, I can't necessarily do the before and after, but hopefully by explaining exactly what I'm doing, you will understand what I mean. So the first one that I want to show you is pretty straightforward, but it is using mute groups. So if you're not familiar with mute groups, you can access those by going to shift and eight underneath there. You may be able to see that it says mute groups. And basically what this does is when you have pads in a group, when you hit one and that's playing out, and then if you hit another pad, it will automatically cancel the first pad and start playing the second one. So there's no need for you to do anything with your fingers apart from press the other pad. So I'll give a demonstration of before, I've got three pads here. Let's make sure these aren't in a mute group. And we're in A. So you can see there, they're all overlapping each other, which is not what we want. You can actually press gate and have gate on, on all three. And then once you have gate on, you can kind of switch between them without getting overlapping like this. That's kind of like the SP404SX way because we had to do that. We didn't have mute groups. And I think this is the reason why I just wanted to mention this one is because old habits sometimes do die hard and getting into the habit of using mute groups can be a bit of a process. So this is just a little bit of a reminder really. Make sure you're using these mute groups. So I'm gonna go shift mute groups and I'm in F. So I'm gonna cycle over to F and I'm gonna do one, two, three. So all those pads are in that mute group now. And what I can do is take off gate. These will now play out automatically. You don't have to hold the pad, but the beauty of this is now once I change pads, you're not gonna get them overlapping. So listen to this now. Okay, so that should make your beat sound a little bit smoother because you're not manually changing between the chops. The mute group is doing the work for you and therefore you should get a much smoother transition between your chops. Okay, so the second tip is related to mute groups really because if you're using mute groups, you can use another trick to make your chops sound even smoother and to give your kick some space to cut through your mix as well. So this next tip is envelopes and if you're not familiar with those, the way you get to them is shift and pitch and speed. You may be able to see under here again that this says ENV, which is envelopes. And what envelopes do is add a fade to the start or the end of a sample. Now this is really, really handy, I think, and it can really butter up those chops because you can cut out some of the nastiness at the start by putting a little fade on it. And it just will make your beat sound a lot smoother. So if you've got the time and the patience, let's say we go to pad one here. Okay, we've got that one selected. So let's do shift and pitch shift. And this chart will come up and you can use the first dial for the start fade and the last dial here for the end fade. So I'm just going to put a little fade on it, not too much, because uh, we don't want to take too much of this, the sample away. We don't want to chop the sample. So if we try five on the attack, so hopefully you can see that on the screen there, there's a little fade on the start. And you can just hear that's really making that sound nice and smooth. It's fading in quickly and it's just smoothing off the sound of that chop and taking away the harshness. So I really, really like this effect. So if I do that to all three, we've got two selected now. So same process and let's do five. And the good thing is with this mode as well, you can change between the chops and it will stay on the envelope screen, but you are actually affecting the envelope for that particular pad that you've pressed. So there's no need to go in and out of it every time you need to go to a new pad, which is a nice little feature. So that's got five on it. That's got five on it. 
and that has five on it as well. I hope you can see the screen, guys. Sorry, the light is a bit bright, so I'm trying to shield it so you can see. But basically, I've added five attack on all these chops. And let's hear the result of that now. And hopefully you can hear there that it just adds a little bit of smoothness to those chops. And once you overlay drums with those as well, they're not going to really be that noticeable, those fades, but the smoothness of it will be. So I really do think that is a killer tip to get your beat sounding smoother. Okay, the third and final point is to do with chopping your samples. And basically what this is, is the zero cross point feature. Now this was introduced in software version 2.0. So if you're not updated, make sure you check out my link in the top right hand corner. And I'm not even trying to gloat here. I actually ended up using that video myself the last time I updated. It's just one of those processes which is quite hard to remember, even though it's quite simple. And yeah, that video is really, really useful. So that gives you a full straight guide to how to update your SP. So if you've bought a new SP and you haven't done that yet, definitely do that because they'll be coming from the factory and they won't be on the latest software version. So basically with this one, if you've got a sample selected, let's say we've got one. So let's just mute that for now and let's go into start and end point and this is where you use it so i'm going to zoom right in and i have explained this before on my channel but basically what the zero cross point is is it's where a waveform is passing through the middle of the screen and is hitting absolute zero sound that's the best description i think i can give of it there might be a more detailed description but i think that's about right so a waveform is going up and down like this and there's a line through the middle which is at zero basically so this is why it's called the zero cross point and where it crosses that line so that exact point where the waveform crosses the horizontal line which you'll be able to see on your screen that's going to be absolute silence and the reason this is important is because when you're chopping samples you may notice quite a lot that you get like a little click at the start of the sample and that's because where you've chopped it it's not at absolute zero it's either slightly above or slightly below so you're gonna get a little artifact on there, which is gonna ruin the sound of it a little bit. It sounds really annoying. You can sort of get rid of those with envelopes by fading them in, but this works very well as well. So you can see here now, I'm in the edit screen of the sample and resample is flashing. Now, all you have to do to activate this is hit resample and automatically that will find the nearest zero cross point. So if you've already done the chop, that's gonna be useful. But now what the beauty of this is, if you start scrolling through, you should be able to see how this is kind of jumping. You see how it's jumping back and forward there across that point? If that wasn't on, it would be going smoothly through that, but it's jumping because what it's doing is it's automatically finding the next nearest zero cross point. So you can scroll through, zoom in, zoom out, find the exact right point that will work for your sample and you're definitely not gonna have a click on the start of your sample. I just think that's so useful and a real game changer being able to just press resample to find the nearest one and then having it locked on and being able to scroll through the sample and find those zero cross points really really useful and you're not going to get the artifacts on your samples anymore so there's three different things there guys that will all help hopefully to make your beat sound smoother just to quickly sum up make sure you get into the habit of using the mute groups because they really help make sure you're using envelopes if you want to get them even smoother and lastly that zero cross point feature as well Okay guys, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for joining me again. I really do appreciate the support and I hope you found this video useful. Those tips I think are really simple but they'll make a massive difference to your beats and help them sound even smoother than they already probably do. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button if you're new around here, hit the like and check out spvids.com for all my merch and beat packs. All the links are in the description below. There's loads of different ways you can support what I'm doing here and keep me making these videos. I would really appreciate it if you could have a look at those. Well, until next time, guys, keep making beats and I'll be back with more content very soon. Peace.